Welcome to the Black Gay History Channel. Please share this video and subscribe to this channel for more captivating content. American Horror Story aims to cover subgenres of horror that are unique to American culture each season. And one of the oldest and most infamous horror tales in America starts when the country was just a few European colonies touching the eastern shores of what is now North Carolina. In the late 1500s, several English ships would try to land and set up a new colony on Roanoke Island, but failed. In 1587, a new settlement of nearly 120 colonists landed on the island, but soon vanished without a trace. While there are still many theories as to what could have happened to all the settlers, historians find it a mystery that all the passengers in their cargo just disappeared. Over time, urban legends have formed about the settlers' disappearance, and Ryan Murphy centered American Horror Story Season 6 on the mysterious island and the story of the colonists. Though much of the series focuses on a married couple that unwittingly buys an old house right in the old settler's 500-year-old haunted campgrounds, I always notice the interesting gay storylines interwoven into these scripts. Evan Peters plays Edward Philip Mott, an aristocratic nobleman who builds the old house on Roanoke Island before inevitably finding it is haunted by the lost colony of the settlers. I thought it was interesting to see that the aristocrat's love interest is, of course, his own African slave, Guinness. Guinness seems to enjoy a bit of freedom because of his relationship to Mott, and the two openly share affection with each other in front of the other house servants, alluding to the fact that Edward Mott's wealth and power shielded him and his servant from the effects of homophobia. Whenever the conversations surrounding gay sexuality and slavery are brought up, Many heteronormative men immediately bring up the concept of buckbreaking, a practice of slave owners raping male slaves in order to emasculate demean them, and these accounts are obviously true. What many people may not want or be willing to discuss is that it's very likely that in the 400 plus years that slavery occurred, some of these enslaved men would have been queer, and some of these relationships would have been consensual. Now we can have a separate discussion about the autonomy of captured people and the little choices they had in that environment. But if we can wrap our collective heads around enslaved women briefly enjoying the romantic and physical intimacy of their white slave captors, then we can surely do the same for the queer black men of the same time period. The thought of queer people who were captured during the transatlantic slave trade has crossed my mind before, and I can't re recollect ever seeing such a character depicted on the TV screen. Though these characters are fictional, I say give it time. It's more than likely there are undiscovered journals somewhere lying in wait with tales of real-life Edward Philip Mott and Guinness and their secret love affairs waiting to be told to the world.